Do you love pyrotechnics, rock music, and smashing stuff with a giant sword? Do you love playing the underdog and are sick of your favorite being called useless? Or do you just think Sunyan is cute? Whatever the reason, you're here because you want to play Sunyan. Welcome to the band. My name's Puck. Welcome to my channel. I've been playing Sunyan pretty much since the day I got her. I originally wanted to get her just to set her as my profile picture, since I wanted a character with brown skin like me. But I gave her a chance and I came to love her and her playstyle. She is my first character to reach level 90, my first character to equip a 5 star weapon, and to this day, my only character to be double crowned, let alone crowned at all. So it's safe to say that I'm a proud Sunyan main. In this guide, I'll be going over Sunyan's kit, constellations, different playstyles, her artifacts, weapons, and a few team comps and other gameplay tips. I'll also be sharing my own opinions on her roles in her team. So without any further intro, let's get into the guide. First, let's go over what Sunan is and isn't. Sunan is a 4 star Claymore character, and although her vision may have the symbol for Pyro on it, she is a physical unit. She has the highest base attack stat of all 4 star units, and her skill gives her a physical damage bonus. Her ascension stat raises her attack stat as well. Her kit steers her hard in the direction of an on field DPS or a burst sub DPS unit. If you choose to build her this way, she can be one of the strongest and most rewarding physical damage characters in this game. Her kit is not well suited for support, and in my opinion, she's not a very effective shielder either. We'll get more into it later, but if you came here looking for a supportive shielder, I'd suggest other characters like Zhongli or Diona. Both of them offer better shields and better support capabilities. If you need a pyro shielder that can apply pyro off field, Toma is a much better option. If you're okay with only having on-field pyro application, even C4 Yanfei will do the job better in most cases. If you really do want to use the Shielder Sunyan though, I'll still go over the build later on. With this in mind, let's go over her talents. Let's start with her normal attack first, Dance on Fire. As a main DPS, a huge portion of her damage output will come from her basic attacks. As with most claymores, her attack string is slow but powerful. Her basic attack string consists of three relatively slow swings and one very slow swing. Her charge attack is the classic spinning attack that will allow her to dish out many small hits in quick succession while draining stamina, ending it off with one strong slash at the end. We'll go more in depth on this later, but you'll usually want to use the first two hits of her attack string to hit enemies until you reach C1, which greatly improves her charge attack. Now for her elemental skill, Sweeping Fervor. With this move, Sinan throws away her life savings by setting her Ruan on fire and swinging it in a circle to bash enemies, causing pyro damage in an AoE around her and creating a really cool looking shield. This shield infuses Sinan with pyro once, clearing any elements that are on your character, and it has a 250% shield effectiveness against incoming pyro attacks. However, despite her burst scaling off of her attack stat, her shield strength infinitely scales off of her defense. Due to this, you can either build her for the shield or for the damage, as doing both doesn't prove very effective in either field. Even if you do build her with defense, this shield is just naturally not very strong. Seriously, this thing pops like a bubble at the thought of a rune guard. This is one of the biggest reasons that Sunan is commonly seen as bad or useless. Additionally, the shield strength and secondary effect is dependent on how many enemies were hit with the initial swing. Hitting 0 or 1 opponents will grant a level 1 shield, Adlib. Hitting 2 opponents will grant her a level 2 shield, Leaden. Hitting 3 or more opponents will create a level 3 shield, Rave. Each level of shield has more absorption than the last, and a level 3 shield will pulse intermittently, causing small amounts of pyro damage to nearby enemies. Her first ascension passive at level 20 changes the skills so that you only have to hit one enemy to get a shield level 2, and two enemies for level 3. However, if you don't have Sunan at C2, this still makes for a very inconsistent shield. The swing's AoE isn't very large, so it's very common for you to simply not have enough enemies nearby to get a shield to level 3. A lot of the times, you miss hitting any enemies at all, and you're just stuck with a weak shield. Additionally, the skill has an 18 second cooldown and a shield duration of 12 seconds, meaning that unless you have a Sacrificial Greatsword on her, or you have her at C2 and are good at timing your skill in burst, you'll have 6 seconds of downtime on her shield. These inconsistencies are a huge weakness in Sunan's kit, 
That's why I don't personally recommend building her as a shield bot or an off-field pyro applicator. Although not a strong character himself, even Toma outclasses her in this field, especially in terms of usability. Moving on to Shinyan's burst, Rift Revolution. It's a 60 energy cost, 15 second cooldown burst that deals a huge hit of physical damage to nearby enemies in a circle around her, launching them away. The sheer intensity of the atmosphere causes pyrotechnic explosions to go off around the circle, causing multiple smaller hits of pyro damage. This burst does a lot of damage on hit, so if you're planning on using Sinyan as a burst CPS, this is everything, and it gets massively buffed after C2 and C4. It has decent scaling and a good energy cost and cooldown, only being beaten out by those characters who have a 40 cost, 12 second cooldown burst. For talent priorities, I'd suggest leveling up her normal attack and burst equally, and then leveling up her elemental skill just a bit behind them. Sinyan's first ascension passive decreases the requirement for her skill's shield levels. Even if your build isn't focused on the shield, this is still a nice quality of life passive. Your shield will be a bit stronger on average, and you'll be dealing passive pyro damage sometimes too. Pretty nice! Her fourth ascension passive is very good for her and I recommend ascending her to this level at least for any team. Any character protected by her shield will gain a 15% physical damage bonus. This passive is really good for boosting Xinyan's own overall damage output. Just tap the skill button once before using your burst or your attack string and boom, free damage. Now, you may notice that this buff applies to other characters in your team. Does this skill make Xinyan a good physical support? Yes and no. While it can add a bit of a buff to your physical team, it's not worth it in my opinion if that's all you want to use Sinyan for. There are other supports that will buff your team's damage a lot more, and Sinyan's skill also risks ruining your team's superconduct reactions with her pyro pulse. I believe this passive is a much better fit for Sinyan herself than for other units. And her utility passive is a perfect cooking ability for defense dishes. Moving on. Next, let's review Sinyan's constellations. At C0, Sinyan isn't very strong, and she doesn't feel very good to play. Her constellations are where our rock star really starts to shine. Starting with her C1, Fatal Acceleration, Sinyan will gain a 12% attack speed bonus after scoring a critical hit. This constellation helps Sinyan feel a lot less sluggish, and it actually makes her spinning charge attack viable. Do note that you have to get a crit before doing her charge attack, as her attack speed won't increase mid-spin. Luckily, scoring a crit should be easy with her second constellation, Impromptu Opening. This constellation causes the physical damage portion of her burst to crit 100% of the time, meaning that you can use her burst and then immediately use a charge attack to rack up tons of damage. This also means that if you're building burst CPS Sinyan, you basically don't need to build up any crit rate at all. This constellation turns her burst up from strong to a powerhouse. Skipping over her third constellation, her C4, Wildfire Rhythm, causes a 15% physical resistance shred to any enemy hit by the swing of her skill. This is a very strong constellation for boosting her overall damage output and will crank her whole kit up a notch. Her C5 is again nothing special, but a free level boost to her already strong burst is much appreciated. Sinyan's C6, Rocket in a Flaming World, is good for boosting her charge attack damage, but it can also easily confuse players. It decreases stamina consumption for her charge attack and gives it an attack bonus equal to 50% of her defense. A common mistake players will make is that they'll get to this constellation and think that this fixes her split scaling issues. This does make her charge attack do a bit more damage, plus the extra stamina is nice, but it does not make it viable to build her with defense. You still simply lose out on too much damage from your burst and normal attacks if you decide to prioritize defense here. It doesn't do nearly enough to fix her issue. Maybe it would be better if it added defense scaling to her burst as well, but as it stands, it's a pretty weak constellation compared to some of the early ones, and is definitely not a priority. And that's it for constellations! If you can, I recommend getting at least C1, but go for C2 and C4 if you can. Sinan is heavily dependent on her constellations to really excel in anything, so I hope she lands on a banner with a 5 star that you like. Now, what kind of artifacts should you put on her? 
If you're building her for physical damage, which I highly recommend, the short answer is 2-piece Bloodstained Chivalry and 2-piece Pale Flame. Each set bonus will grant you a 25% physical damage bonus, which just boosts her damage like crazy. Plus, since Bloodstained is in the strong box and they're both 2-piece sets, it should be pretty easy to farm for. You can also run a 4-piece Pale Flame, but it's much less consistent. And do note that the shield from her burst at C2 does count towards Pale Flame stacks. You can also swap out one of the two artifact sets for a set bonus that boosts attack, like Shimanawa or Gladiators. Since you probably have a ton of these artifacts laying around, this should be even quicker to build, but it will lead to your Sunan doing quite a bit less damage. The attack boost just can't stack up against direct physical damage bonus. For our main DPS build, you'll want an attack percent sands, physical damage bonus goblet, and a crit damage or a crit rate circlet, whichever stat you need most. Try to get your crit stats to a 1 to 2 ratio of crit rate to crit damage, all the while stacking up as much attack as you can from set stats. Try to get somewhere around 115 to 130% energy recharge from sub stats if you can. For a burst sub DPS build, the stats will be a bit different. You want to go for around 130 to 155% ER, so use an energy recharge sand if your weapon doesn't have any. After that, build up your offensive stats the same way as for the main DPS build, high attack and looking for that sweet spot of 1 to 2 crit ratio. If you have Sunyan's C2, crit rate isn't necessary for a burst DPS, so you can spec fully into attack and crit damage. If you have a fire in your soul and want to let it rock and roll, you get to run. <laughs> if you have a fire in your soul and want to let it rock and roll, you can run Sunyan with C6, Bennett, and make her a full on pyro DPS. For this build, use a 4 piece Lava Walker set with attack sands, pyro damage goblet, and a crit circlet. If you're running a Melt or Vape team, you can also use Crimson Witch of Flames here. Although this type of set is quite a bit weaker than Physical Sunyan, it can be pretty fun if you've already taken the leap into the deep end that is ascending your Bennett to C6. If you have a burning desire to build up her defense and make her a shielder, the most obvious choice of artifacts would be a 4-piece Tenacity of the Melolith. Just keep in mind that you'll need to keep up her level 3 shield consistently to keep the passive up. As such, you'll really need C2 to make this type of playstyle work in any capacity, as getting a level 3 shield from her skill is simply way too inconsistent. You can also go for a 4 piece Husk of Opulent Dreams, which should be a bit easier to keep the passive up. For artifact stats, just go all in on defense percent because you'll need it. You'll need around 150-160% to 160 ER to burst off cooldown, so you'll probably want an ER weapon for this set unless you're willing to sacrifice a bit of your shield strength by going for an ER Sands. Speaking of weapons... In terms of 5 star weapons, your best and coolest looking choice for any physical DPS or pyro DPS build is the Redhorn Stone Thresher. With a super high base attack stat, coupled with a crit damage stat, tripled with a free defense boost, and quadrupled with a free boost to normal and charge attacks, this weapon is practically made for Sinyan. And Ito too, I guess. Next up is either the Song of Broken Pines or the Unforged. Both weapons are very strong on any main DPS Sinyan, but considerably weaker on a burst DPS build, due to their passes being independent on scoring multiple hits and staying on the field. The Unforged is especially strong when running double Geo team comps, which we'll talk about later. The edgy Wolf's Gravestone is also very good for Sinyan. With the amount of attack this weapon gives, it even makes it viable to run an ER sands over attack percent to meet Sunyan's ER requirement more easily. With its passive active, it deals even more damage than a shielded unforged, but still less than a broken pines with max stacks. However, the passive is somewhat situational and getting it to activate won't always be possible. Moving on to 4 star weapon options, the best option by far is the battle pass exclusive Serpent Spine. At R1, this weapon rivals the Wolf's Gravestone at max stacks, and at R5 with max stacks, this weapon trumps all of the 5 star options. If you're a battle pass enjoyer and a Sunyan lover, this weapon is perfect for you. However, since the passive relies on Sunyan not getting hit, it's best to run this with a good shooter like Zhongli. Either that, or you better have some godlike dodging skills. For more accessible 4 star options, some good choices are the Black Cliff Slasher, the Prototype Archaic, and the Snow Tomb Star Silver. 
all of these weapons have a very similar damage output, and the latter two are craftable and relatively easy to refine. The Sacrificial Greatsword is also a decent option for burst DPS or shield or shinyan. For burst DPS, it helps satisfy your ER requirements. For shield or shinyan, it will help you keep your shield up more consistently, especially if you lack or C2. If you're interested in the damage outputs for other claymore options, I'll show a spreadsheet on screen that compares them all for both physical and pyro shinyan. I'll link this spreadsheet in the description of the video as well. Huge shout out goes to these lovely people from the Shinyan Mains Discord server who helped put this together. Woo! Finally, let's go over a few good team comps. If you're running Shielder or Burst DPS Shinyan, you can just add her onto any team that you need her on. Burst Shinyan can be especially good paired with Red and Shogun due to her fairly cheap burst. Just be careful, since her pyro application can ruin your elemental reactions depending on what team you drop her into. Now, from here on out, you notice that I opted to put Bennett on literally every team. Bennett is just a massively strong attack buffer and can give Sunyan a massive power boost in any type of team. But of course, not everyone has Bennett, and not everyone wants to use Bennett with Sunyan, especially because he can serve a pivotal role in so many other team comps. If that sounds like you, feel free to swap any Bennett I mentioned from here on out with a different pyro unit like Xiang Link Toma. As long as you get the pyro resonance and some sort of support or sub DPS value for them, they'll work just fine as well. Except for the pyro Xinyan teams, you'll need Bennett for those. Before I get into the next few teams, I want to mention jump and dash cancelling. Outside of our charge attack after C1, Xinyan's most efficient basic attack combo is to do the first hit, the second hit, then either dash or jump to cancel the attack string, then start over. This is called an N2 cancel. Okay, now that we're all on the same page, we can talk about teams for main DPS Sinyan builds. This is where things start to get interesting. For any physical unit, the most straightforward team is the Super Conduct team. Other physical units like Razor and Eula already cover one half the elements needed for Super Conduct, but Sinyan needs a bit of extra help. A superconduct team for her usually consists of Xinyan, an Electro Applicator, a Cryo Applicator, and a Pyro character like Bennett for Residence. For your Electro character, the best choice overall would be the Raiden Shogun, but Fischl works well here too. Kuki Shinobu may also be able to slot in here in the future as well. For the Cryo unit, the best option is Rosaria, but you can use units like Kaya or Dayona too. Diana is especially useful since she adds healing, shielding, and a bit of extra utility to your team as well. Bennett is the obvious best choice for Pyro support here, as his attack buffs are just straight up insane and his healing is really nice too. If you have a release C1, the basic game plan here is to get Bennett's burst out and cause super conduct. Then go into Sinyan, use her skill for the physical damage boost, then her burst. If you have C2, you can go straight into charge attacks after that. If you don't have C2 and your burst doesn't crit, just use N2 cancel combos until you get a crit, then start a charge attack. I recommend doing a full charge attack after her burst, cancelling out of the final swing with a jump for dash, normal attacking twice, then doing a second charge attack. If you have Sinyan at C0 though, it's best to just repeat N2 cancel combos. Because of her pirate element, it can be a bit awkward and difficult to keep super conduct up at times. Luckily, our next team comp can help with that. Another great team comp is Double Resonance, consisting of Sinyan, two Juno units, and Bennett again. This is my personal favorite team to use. With an active shield up, this team's damage comes very close to the super conduct team from before, sacrificing just a little bit of power for a lot more convenience and ease of use. This team also works especially well if using the Unforged or Serpent Spine. For this team, I recommend Zhongli or Noel so that you can keep a decent Geo Shield up consistently. And for the second Geo unit, you can either go a sub DPS route like Ningguang or Beidou, or you can use Xinyan's beautiful supportive girlfriend, Yinjin. Yinjin boosts Xinyan's normal attack damage significantly if well built, but keep in mind that Yinjin's buff does not apply to charge attacks. This team is very fun and easy to pilot. All you need to do is get up your shield, use Bennett's burst, go into your Yunjin or sub DPS and use their burst, then go into Sunyan to use her skill, burst, then charge and normal attacks. If you choose to use Yunjin, you'll want to use N2 cancel combos for the most damage output. Just avoid using charge attacks whenever Yunjin's burst is active. 
for Pyrocyon build. Any team you choose will absolutely need C6 Bennett on it. Bennett C6 is what enables Sinyan to do any sort of consistent pyro damage at all. Without it, Pyro Sinyan can't function whatsoever. Now, you can either go for a Melt or Vape team, or you can decide that, you know what, these other elements are just holding me back, and go for a Mono Pyro team. For all three of these teams, you'll want to bring Bennett for the infusion and Xiang Ling or some other off-field Pyro DPS for extra Pyro output. The only real difference between the three teams is your last unit, so let's start with the reaction-based teams. For Melt, Rosaria is again a really good choice for a Cryo Applicator. Her burst does a lot of damage and keeps enemies in a wide area inflicted pretty consistently. Personally, I believe that Melt is the better team than Vape for Pyra Sinyan. For Vape teams, the easy choice is Singtul, but you can also go for a different Hydra sub GPS unit like Kokomi or even Barbara since you'll be getting pretty close to enemies most of the time anyways. Mona is also a great pick, as she'll support your team by taunting enemies and increasing your team's burst damage too. Again, for both of these reaction based teams, Lava Walker is a really good set for Sion, but Crimson Witch has the potential to do even more damage depending on the team and its substats. But hey, reactions aren't everything in this game. Mono Pirate teams are a lot of fun too, and pretty easy to fit together. For this team, you'll want to use any Animo support unit with Fear Dust and Venerer, preferably Kazaha and just stack them to the high heavens with elemental mastery. Super simple, but I do have two quick notes. A high level venti will cause your charge attacks and some of your normal attacks to miss any enemies that are late enough to get picked up by the black hole. So be careful when choosing animo units. Also, remember that Lava Walker is always better than Crimson Witch for this type of teams, for obvious reasons. Now, there's one last team comp I want to mention. I've never actually heard of anyone using this team, but I figured it could be a lot of fun. Cryo DPS Sinyan. You can run Sinyan with the Blizzard Strayer set and pair her with Tongyun. Tack on Xiang Ling and a non C6 Bennett, and you've got yourself one heck of a unique spin on the classic national team. If you do try out this team comp, please tell me about it in the comments. I'd really love to hear about it. But I think that's about it for Sinyan. I hope this guide helped you out. I tried my best to be as thorough as possible while trying not to get too confusing, so let me know in the comments if I did well or if you have any questions. I'll be leaving some links to useful comparison spreadsheets in the description, as well as a helpful Sinyan guide doc that I used when I first started playing her. Huge thanks to the Sinyan Mains Discord, their theory crafting projects really helped make this video possible in the first place. I'll leave a link to their Discord as well as my own Discord server down below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of me, go follow me on twitch.tv slash slurpingpuffs. I stream four days a week there, and I'd love to see you stop by. And as always, just thank you so much for watching, and good luck on your journey. Love you. I mean, um, rock on!